Hey everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to go over status uh, of where I sit with the carpenter's tool chest and the trays that I'm building to go inside of it uh, to slide on rails across the top. Uh, this is one of the trays that I'm building. Uh, as you can see the walls are a little thicker than most traditional trays uh, as well as the bottom. Uh, this is full three quarter inch stock. The bottom is kind of a funky figured slash spalted uh, maple and the sides and front and back panels, these side panels here are all cherry. Uh, the joinery that's uh, putting this together <clears throat> is not my favorite joinery but it's like a half lap style joinery. Uh, frankly I don't even like this joinery because it's not in my opinion true woodworking joinery but it is a joint and that's the reason I went with it was because that's what's already established in the uh, the rest of the tool chest. So I figured I'd go ahead and keep it like that. I wouldn't have some, some nice dovetail trays sitting inside of a half lap box. Uh, but anyway, so this is where we sit now. And I wanted to make this, all the trays, uh, very user friendly to be handled, picked up uh, regularly all day, every day. So I smoothed it all out. All the corners and edges are all nice and rounded off. A good bull nose on there and feels really, really good to the hand. So um, right now we are going to make some handles. I'm going to put a handle here-ish and put one on this side so that we can pull it out and kind of stack it off or whatever if we need to while we're trying to get uh, things out of the bottom of the tool chest. Let me show you one that I've already got done. This is the large tray and it's pretty simple. Uh, if I was a smart man, a smarter man, uh, I would have I would have drilled these holes and slotted them out for the handles before I put them together. Uh, but lesson learned. Um, I put it together, then had the thought to, or reminded my, uh, remembered that I had to put handles in it. So now I, I am where I am, you know. So we're going to, in this video, lay out for we're going to do the layout real quick for uh, for the handles and then we'll uh, we'll chisel them out all right so the layout is pretty simple uh, on my other one I'll just use the same measurements I did off the other ones they seem to work really well um, so I just went six and a half and all I really did, I had a, an old wooden crate that I'm using for all my climbing gear, all my tree climbing gear. And it did, it was perfect for, uh, my climbing gear, but it didn't have a handle on either, on either side. So I had to pick it up from the bottom and I just figured, okay, I'll go ahead and, uh, and make a few handles in it just to kind of practice for this. And uh, good thing I did because I was able to kind of play around with the size, the length of the slot, and how deep, to, how far down to put it, and what kind of felt comfortable and whatnot. So, um, but I also like like normal, like kind of mock things up. So, <clears throat> all right. In this case, I I went around and found a bunch of other things that had handles and kind of gauged where those sat in reference to uh, to the top so I knew so I had a good starting point on what would feel good and I'm just so I got the, a good length which is about four inches for my hand um, for the slot for the handle and I'm dropping it down three quarters of an inch from the top and the slot itself is going to be three quarters and so I just centered it on, on the, uh, just centered it on the 
the tray front to back. Just kind of eyeballing where these are going to end up. <clears throat> this isn't rocket science, I'm just drilling some holes and going to town. All right. So now I got to set it at an inch and a half. I actually go, yeah, I'll set it at an inch and a half. That'll give me my bottom reference line. And then three quarters of an inch. Sorry if the lighting is terrible. So that's my slot. Now I just go up to an inch and an eighth, which is half, halfway between three quarter and an inch and a half. Or sorry, inch and a, uh, yeah, inch and eighth. And that will give me my, my center point. Now I want this center point because I'm going to be drilling most of this out. That's on security guy. He's your I wouldn't have to. You can chisel it all out, but I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, to drill these out. I'll drill a series of holes in here. Uh, I think I drilled five holes, so one on either end. That's where you start, and then you kind of gauge how many you're going to be able to get. So if two would open the whole slot up, then you would just do two. In my case. I didn't think it would do that, so I went right in the middle and drilled one here and then drilled one on either side of that hole. So we'll go ahead and get started with it. Um, Trusted by professionals everywhere. Learn more at All right, so I just like I said, it's not a rocket science. I'm just going to gauge kind of where I need to be as far as top to bottom, and that's good. And I'm on my center line, so. As Paul said, Paul Seller says, use my relaxed muscle here. And Cherry likes to clog up the fine teeth of the snail on these bits. See, like I was saying, if I'd a, <clears throat> I could just, I would be able to just pull it out right here. The snail is barely sticking through the end. The other side, I'd be able to pull it out and drill from the other side to have a good, a good uh, clean hole all the way through it. But since I don't, I don't have that option with where I sit now. Uh, the other two handles I just basically chiseled out from the backside, and that didn't work all that well either. So I'm going to try and just kind of go real slow through and hopefully those score lines will I bet I'm gonna try something I've never done before never had to really but we'll see if it works I'm gonna clamp a block on the other side and this is what happens when you start thinking can go through that without any breakout. My problem is I lost my snail when I broke through the other side, so oh, it caught, so good. So I'll go a little bit further. 
and should be into the other piece by now. My bit's loose. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see how that went. I have to move this to move the block down anyway. That worked out like a charm. Perfect. Well, there you go. That was hard, that was really hard to uh, to get it chiseled out <clears throat> from the backside. I had to break out my carving chisels uh, when I did my last one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do this for the rest of them. It worked so well. Might as well do it for all of them. And this will go a whole lot quicker than I thought. So make sure you're not going to go past your bottom, and as long as you're center line. Should be fine. The problem is I'm not, I didn't count turns because yet that last one was my, I think I'm through. Pretty sure that was the last bit of that one. We'll just double check. Also, you don't want to, as far as good, <clears throat> good tool etiquette, I guess, you don't want to, uh, you don't want to let your, your augers get hot, like so hot you can't touch them. So I always make sure to let them cool down after every couple passes. Is <clears throat> that when you get it hot and you don't let it, you start getting it really hot without cooling it down, you start changing the temper of the of the, uh, the cutting edge. And that turned out perfect too. But you start changing the temper of the cutting edge and well all your bits will go will get dull really quickly. Should be able to do the, all the rest of them. with this setup. And you can't really even see where you're at, but I'm gonna drop the computer if I go much further. <laughs> All right, we're good there. So now I'm just gonna eyeball the center. And then we're good. Normally, when you go to a breakout point, you would just count your turns, but I don't, I don't have to on this one. I guess I could start counting since all the rest of them are the same. And I got a little bit higher towards that, that upper hole, but that's all right. I could drill two, but I think this, this will be just fine. It'll give me, give us another point to talk about. So right now, as I'm doing this, I'm sighting down the the side uh, knickers 
cutters, spurs, whatever you want to call them, making sure that they're lining up with my guidelines that I marked out, laid out in the beginning. Normally, if I cared about breakout, I would be feeling for that spur, but for that snail to come out the other side, but I don't have to do that with this. Nifty little setup. And it's not too hot, but I'm going to let the bit cool down a little bit. While it's doing that, I'm going to just go ahead and start chiseling. <coughs> So, I actually was able to get most of both sides of this. I guess you can't see this, so I'm just going to basically carve away. I'm aiming for like the bottom center of the hole. I'm not going straight down the line because that'll put me off my mark considerably if I strike it wrong or the, grid, the grain doesn't want to work with me. So now these, this is where the two holes didn't touch. And so I'm just kind of chiseling it out like I would a mortise until they break through. It doesn't take too long for these bits to cool off. You don't want to dip it into water or anything like that. It could, I guess it wouldn't hurt it as long as you don't get it super hot. And I'll just get in the middle here. Make sure I'm in my guidelines and I'm good. and we're all the way through. quick and simple layout and we'll go ahead and <clears throat> chisel these guys out as you can see I went to I went in and picked these up because they were super cheap and I couldn't make them for as much as uh, as cheap as these cost but these are aluminum dogs and they already have the wire in there so it stays real nice and it's got a little checkered face on there a little um, little knurly. Well, they stay pretty good and they, they've been working great. And these are, the faces are normal like you would think. They kind of tilt towards the front, but they're tall. Oh, they're almost as long as my thumb. Or most of them are short. Like here's the ones that I made. If you want to compare them. And that works too, because if I would have tried doing this and stuck this way down in my dog, it would have split it. And that's why I went with these, because one of my dogs split. They were so cheap, so I just got two sets. And uh, yeah, they've been working great. You just got to be careful. I mean, pay attention to what you're doing. You don't want to set your planes down on them or anything like that. So just get it nice and snug inside your, your vise. <clears throat> and remember not to chisel all the way through because you'll chip it out on the other side. So on this side I just go bevel down 
and go that way. So I've knocked those peaks off there. And then I can come back from this side a little bit closer to my line. Still kind of aiming for the sky, as Paul Sellers would say. box I could actually get in there but I can't with this I need some smaller chisels which I just happened to pick some up the other day at an auction along with these are those little tiny as far as I know they're cheap I'm not um, that wasn't good I think it wasn't a chisel so I picked up these uh, cabinet maker screwdrivers. I love these things. These are amazing. You can get so so good of a grip with these things. <clears throat> They're really amazing. I uh, picked these up and a whole bunch of other things. But they came with these little chisels, these little guys. Little like carving chisels. But even though I'm not using them for carving, I can uh, I can use the fact that they are tiny to get inside this cavity. So kind of works out works out well. Oh, I didn't want to grab that one. <clears throat> I haven't sharpened these yet, but they're. Seem to be sharp enough to do the job today. This isn't fine, fine detail woodwork or anything anyway, so even if I messed up or these didn't work, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Just trying to get it carved down, chiseled down to basically below the uh, the round marks that or the little little marks that the drill bit left. You can come in with the bench chisel and get this side. At least you have a depth to shoot for. Go ahead and knock these top ones out. It'll give us a little bit more room. And we're kind of doing the opposite and shooting downward. Just a hair. putting a pretty nice chamfer on these so even if you go above the line a little bit it's not really gonna matter too much Super dull. I'm gonna be able to get this second half, this far half with this bench chisel. I'm sure, I could break out one of my other chisels that are more appropriate for this. They're already sharp, but I can't really see what I'm doing all that well, so I'll just work on the side that we can see. And we're almost there on the bottom side of this handle. 
Just kind of steer your chisel. Gonna work for that. Now I can flip it over. see that upper side much better and I think I'm just gonna because I can't really can't really chisel from the other side while it's sitting like this so I'm gonna go ahead and not care if I break through because I'm gonna be putting a big <clears throat> a really nice chamfer on that other side so I'm kind of almost expecting a little breakout but I go I'm gonna go kind of 45 just in case it helps so far I don't have any breakout I help minimize the breakout anyway just take small cuts once we get it super close I can do the rest with a file and some sandpaper or just sandpaper whatever you've got And this isn't we're not we're not learning anything new here really just kind of showing you where I'm at this is not rocket science just straight fun all right now I'm gonna sit it in here and I know y'all can't really see it that great but it's gonna let me get a little bit better purchase and work on it from a few different angles. No, maybe a, just to set the computer down right in the thick of it. How's that? Should have done this the whole time. Good thing about putting a computer that way. I'm going all the way through on purpose, though, remember, so hopefully we don't have a whole lot of breakout, but kind of expecting it. Oh, a funky angle of a chisel. can't tell I am loving this knife. Hi mom. Once we do that, we've got it mainly down. There's a couple different ways that we can sand this. Um, if you want to get into those tight spots, a dowel with some sandpaper. Uh, this is the sandpaper that I've been using a lot of is this stuff from 3M. It's uh, three inches wide, two and a half, two and three quarter. Two and three quarter inch wide. Uh, it's 150. They make it in uh, all different uh, all different grits. But this is great. I have a lot of this on hand. It's not that expensive, and I can just do stuff like this all day long. And my favorite, which is coming back or coming up soon, but I can also stick it on my boards. On my sanding boards, this is a long one, longer, like a joiner style sander, I guess. And a small block that you guys see me use that all the time. 
Then I use it on my dowel with my favorite. This is just stick it on my finger. And that works great for this application. Mainly for these getting these nice and rounded out. The transition is so smooth when it's when you're using this method. You get to use a lot more of the sandpaper this way. And I said I'm I'm taking quite a bit of it off the corners, so that's why you see that. And I also have a stick that I can get. It's just a little wedge, a little piece of scrap that some sandpaper on and it's nice for getting those straighter sections keep them kind of straight the unevenness that we got from the chisels we can't really get a card scraper in here that'd be my my first tool to go to. We got a little bit of that auger bit left. The auger bit indentation on there. It's almost out. Close enough for me to start working. We'll go ahead and finish this up. Do the other, the other three slots after this, and the next video you you see me shoot will be uh, probably going over, you know, the finished product uh, minus the handles. I still have to the handles for the drawers. That is, I still have to forge out. I still have to forge out four more handles. Four more handles, like the one I made, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago now. Uh, so I got to forge out four of these, and we'll attach them, and that will be it. I can start putting my tools away. I think I might actually start going ahead and put my tools away uh, as it sits once I finish up the trays, because it'll be fully functional. I'll put the lid back on and start putting the tools away. That way I can kind of get my shot back. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming uh, to have a nice place for all of my tools. And then I also have the chest, which you guys haven't seen yet. The other chest, which is, I'm super excited to jump into that because it's, it's a really, really cool piece. Um, and I'm sure I'm excited to show you guys, but I don't want to show it until, uh, until it's on the chopping block for, um, for, for getting done. So until next time, friends and family, I love you. Everyone else, I'll see you.